In my last video, I painted up some corn berserkers to add to my second edition Chaos Space Marines army. In this video, I shall give them a leader, who may or may not slay them in combat as well as his foes. Khan the Betrayer The Betrayer, who goes by the name of Khan. Khan has had more than one model in the history of Citadel miniatures, but I am painting the original, and in metal to boot. I found this on eBay, unpainted, and for an uncharacteristically reasonable price. I primed him white for some reason, might have been with some other models I sprayed at the same time since I tend to prime in batches. Anyway, this metal model was released in 1996 and came in four parts. The torso showing his ripped arm, the backpack with skulls for vents, the Mark I plasma pistol arm, and the head complete with happy bunny ears. This model was the staple to represent Khan on the tabletop until he was replaced some 20 years later with a plastic kit and a significantly more dynamic pose, unlike the metal model, which has a much flatter profile. Indeed, it seems to follow the pattern of other miniatures from the era, namely, let's hold our weapons aloft and shout loudly, such as this ultramarine sergeant, who strongly forbids ne'er-do-wells from trespassing on his property, and this apothecary, and Dante, and probably many more. Granted, one cannot tell if Khan is shouting behind his mask, but the respirator vent certainly looks disgruntled, and it would be a safe bet to say Khan is, at the very least, tutting and eye-rolling, if not utterly livid behind his mask. But said model, like many beautiful metal models from this era, was relegated to fine cast at least as early as 2012. Khan first appears in Codex Chaos for 2nd edition 40k, and since you know this edition is my niche, we'll venture no further. He gets his own section along with the other World Eaters in the middle colour section, since due to this being an ancient document, only a few special pages were colour, rather than black and white. I like this quote attributed to him, Corn cares not from whence the blood flows, neither do I. If you think about it long enough, it conjures up all sorts of wrong in my head, so we will move on. Although apparently, he spoke these words on Scalathrax, which is a demon world, and the site of a famous conflict between the World Eaters and the Emperor's children, following the Horus Heresy. It's there he gained his reputation as a betrayer. The tale goes that Khan became somewhat indignant with his fellow legionaries, for taking shelter for the night while their enemies still drew breath. In response, he took a flamer and started torching the city, driving the legionaries from their B&Bs, not unlike one expels felines using citrus peel. Anarchy ensued, legionaries fighting each other to see who sleeps on the bed rather than on the floor. All the while, Khan slaughtered anyone he found. Yes, anyone. Even the night porter handing out the room keys. It was this event that fractured the Legion into warbands. Though I concede, I may have gotten some details wrong. Khan costs 217 points, and can be in your army as an exalted champion. He may lead your army, if it is a thousand points or less, and comprise solely of corn berserkers or demons. I like this rule. A nice, fluffy reason to have a force composition a certain way. Mon rules could probably learn something from this. Anyway, his profile is shown here. With a weapon skill of 9, just one pip shy of a bloodthirster. Strength 6, 6 wounds, and 3 attacks to name a few combat related characteristics. 3 attacks doesn't seem like many, but considering he also has frenzy, which doubles attacks on the charge, I'd say that's significant. The Betrayer is equipped with a Mark I plasma pistol, bolt pistol, frag and crack grenades, and of course Gorechild, which we shall get back to. 
Mark I plasma weapons are something unique to this codex, and reflect the older weapons the traitors have kept from the heresy. It makes them liable to overheat, which you may think is common to all plasma weapons, but in 2nd edition, this was not so. The familiar rules, coming later in 3rd edition. The plasma weapons possessed by the Imperials were safer, though they had to recharge after each shot, so could only be fired every other turn. Mark I plasmas didn't have this issue, but they could overheat causing various degrees of damage to the wielder, dictated by a roll on the table shown here. Unlike a roll of a 1 to hit causing the overheat, this happened if a jam was rolled on the sustained fire dice, but basically it had the same odds of occurring. Since Khan has the mark of corn, his save from his power armour is improved by 1, from 3 plus to 2 plus. He has three war gear cards, slash chaos rewards, Blood Fury of Corn, Praise of Corn, and Gore Child. And at this stage, I will admit that when recording the audio, I had to take care not to mispronounce Khan as Corn and Corn as Khan. Whoever invented that confusion was for sure having a laugh. Corn, uh, sorry, Khan, has a strategy rating of three, which means something about who goes first in the rules, but it's a middling value if you weren't aware. Definitely much lower than Abaddon or Big Daddy Kalgar. Like other Chaos Space Marines, Khan has the rapid fire rule, which he will never use because he would have to stand still for a turn. As stated before, he is frenzied and cannot be broken or subject to any other form of psychology in game. Like other Corn Berserkers, he triples his charge move when charging into combat. In combat, the unstoppable attack rule means his hits cannot be parried. Being impetuous means his follow-up moves are 4 inches rather than the usual 2 inches. His Praise of Corn Chaos Reward means he can re-roll any failed armor save. Blood Fury of Corn means he has 6 wounds, but also had the downside that if no foes are within 4 inches when he makes his follow-up move, he will charge and attack the nearest friendly model instead. And finally... Trusty Gorechild is a strength 7 monster of a chain axe, which allows Khan to re-roll ones to hit in combat. The rules and lore in Codex Chaos are accompanied by this interesting artwork, by legendary Warhammer artist Mark Gibbons. It shows Khan shouting his praise to Khorne against the backdrop of a stormy sky and standing atop the backing dancers from Queen's I Want to Break Free music video. Perhaps that was the melody our man is singing to Khorne at the time, Though the model has chains like this art, it doesn't show them as spiky as this, which is totally metal. Speaking of the model, let me show you how I painted mine. I loosely followed the picture in the codex. I started by applying a thin coat of corn red all over the model, except for the base and a few areas I would paint another colour. While that was drying, I blocked in some areas black such as the chains, the backpack vents, on Gore Child, and on the plasma pistol. At this point, I realized how unhappy I was with the shade of red, and instead painted over all the corn red areas with the old glorious Citadel foundation paint, Murkite Red. I appreciate the difference may be too subtle to notice, but I noticed, and so that's what's important. The next stage, was the shading stage. Normally, my methods are more subtle than just slap it all on. But here, I really did give both barrels of slap with army paint a strong tone. Any area that was red got the full treatment. You might notice that I seem to be painting things in a random order, and that's kind of intentional. Unlike painting a squad of models, when you painted the others until the first one dries, with one model, I just paint one area, and while that is drying, paint another area. Hence, the random order. Anyway, next I painted the exposed arm and hand with Screamer Pink. It's my preferred base colour for pale flesh since I like to leave this showing in the recesses. Now I have this flat brown for the gold parts of the armour. I base coat all the areas that will be gold with this first, 
I considered painting a non-metallic gold like for the corn berserkers I painted in the last video, but I decided against it. I wanted Khan to be set apart from them in this colour scheme, namely a darker red and a metallic gold. And this is how he looks so far. Time to brighten up the red a little bit. I started with Mephiston Red and used this to apply a thick line to each of the sharp edges on the armour. The other areas of the armour, which are more prone to catching light, also get a coat of this red. And with that part done, I painted a thin line of orange over the sharp edges. For example, the elbow, the wrist, hand and fingers, and all around the eyes and the respirator on his mask. I also dot on some highlight on the rivets. I wanted to paint some battle damage on his armour, so I used a thin line of black on some sections to represent that. This was then highlighted with a mix of Trollslayer orange and dark sand. Time to give the gold some attention. I mixed dwarven gold with the same brown I used to base coat the gold areas before, since I didn't want it to be too vibrant. I considered using Rune Lord Brass by Citadel, but that looked too tarnished for my liking when I tried it out. I know Khan is a blood crazed maniac, but during his downtime, I'm sure he likes to give his armour a good old spit polish. He's not a follower of Nurgle after all. So, as well as the rims of some armour panels, this lovely corn symbol on his only shoulder pad got the gold, as did the bunny ears. And here's what he looks like at this stage. Sticking with the metallics, I cracked out the old faithful gun metal and dry brushed this onto the chains and the armor vents on his backpack. The tube going from the plasma pistol to... well, I can't tell where it's going to be honest. Anyway, this got a brush of gun metal as well. For the skulls, and there certainly is no lack of them here, I applied a mixture of tan earth and dark sand as a base. Skulls for the Skull Throne indeed. Khan seems to have taken a fair few for himself, judging by his armour. Back to the skin. I mixed some barbarian flesh with Screamer Pink in a roughly one-to-one -one ratio and applied this to all but the deepest recesses. What can I say? Khan is jacked to the nines and I wouldn't want his bicep and tricep to be lacking in definition. And with some barbarian flesh and just a drop of Screamer Pink, I painted his fingers and the uppermost areas of skin and finally, with a mix of barbarian flesh and dark sand, I highlighted his knuckles, which would of course be pale based on how hard he is gripping Gore Child. Now this sculpt has a massive blood vessel showing, so that needed a coat of blue to make it really pop. I used Calador Sky first, and then some Fenrisian Grey to highlight it. Gore Child has this leather strap which is common to many melee weapons in the 41st millennium. So, I base coated this with flat earth which is a bit like Mournfang Brown. Further up the shaft, I applied Thunderhawk Blue. This also went on the exposed power cables, and those curtain tiebacks he has hanging from his bunny ears and just below his knees. I overbrush a little Calador Sky onto the plasma pistol, but leave some of the black showing for the purposes of shading. I do the same on some details on the back of the backpack. Before I apply a wash to the skulls, I highlight the uppermost areas with pure white, with the intention that this will be toned down a little once I apply some Skeleton Horde contrast paint. I painted the leather on the axe handle with tan earth this time, leaving the darker brown showing in the recesses. Then using dark sand, I highlighted the edges of each strap before I had a mini existential crisis regarding why I paint such detail anyway. Using a lighter blue, I picked out some of the blue details on the backpack and his weapons. Skeleton Horde was applied over the skulls, focusing mainly on the teeth and eye sockets, so these can pick up some shading. I used an old brush I found just recently, 
It seemed a good choice, since I know some of you get a thrill from making fun of my old brushes. Reichland Flesh Shade was used to shade the gold areas, focusing on those parts that would be in shadow, such as those under the knee. And the base was looking a bit sad, so I mixed up some Naga Green with a drop of Dark Sand. I had this crazy idea that it would make a shade like the original Goblin Green. I applied a couple of layers of this to the base. Nothing like a grim dark warrior on a garish base. Only a few details left to go. I highlighted the curtain tassels with Fenrisian Grey. I started by painting a thin line down each ridge with my thinnest brush, but then I remembered you can do several at once by using the side of your brush as long as it holds the minimum amount of paint. I repeated this step on the plasma pistol. The eye lenses were painted by first painting Caliban Green, then a spot of Scorpion Green. I tried this combo on the plasma coils of the plasma pistol. For the tiny area they occupy on the model, it seemed to be a reasonable method. To make the chains pop a little more, I used my brightest silver paint, which is a bit like Runefang steel. I dry brushed this over all the silver areas. The sharpest edges and rivets of the bunny ears got the same treatment. The base, now dry, got a tentative lick of dark sand to pick out some of the grains of sand and make it look like grass. And there we have it. Khan the Betrayer, the original metal model, painted a sort of scabby red colour to set him apart from his other brother berserkers. It was an absolute joy to paint this model with all of its fancy details. So many components sell the anger of this fellow. The grimmest respirator, the throbbing blood vessel, the chains, and the overall get off my land pose. Even these funny little faces on his bunny ears infer a deeper mystery. Who are they anyway? Bound demons of corn? Two angry pixies whispering curses in each ear? Who knows? Suggestions in the comments are welcome. So now I have two leaders for my Chaos Army. But really, Big Daddy Abad isn't going to stand aside for Khan. So that might get awkward. Anyway, I have three squads and two characters so far. I'm not far off the standard 1500 points, which was agreed in the 90s to be a sensible amount for a 40k game. Still, of course I'm going to exceed this. I now have a Chaos Dreadnought to paint, and plans to make a Nurgle Predator. And thanks to eBay, and some generous donations from fans, I have a huge backlog to paint. And speaking of thanks, I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my channel since not long ago I exceeded 10,000 followers. What can I say? You all encourage me to keep painting retro things, and that means I can totally blame you to Mrs. Miniscape when she asks. But seriously, massive thanks for your support and kind messages. If you had asked me when I started this journey back in May last year that I would have a small football stadium's worth of fans, I would have said, get out of here. But here we are, and I have no intention of stopping. So if you like what I paint, why not check out my Instagram page? And thanks again for watching my video on Khan the Betrayer, he's a world eater. Khan the Betrayer, he's gonna beat ya. Khan the Betrayer, his axe is god child. Khan the Betrayer, foes bodies are piled. Khan the Betrayer, disciple of Khan. Khan the Betrayer, impetuous thorn. Khan the Betrayer, wins combats alone. Khan the Betrayer. Skulls for the skull throne. Take care, and thanks for watching.